For today's grim adventure, we find ourselves about an hour outside of London in a little village known as Maple Durham. And at the end of this street is something known as the Maple Durham Water Mill. It's an old mill next to the water that was featured in 1970 on Black Sabbath's very, very first album, self entitled Black Sabbath. And we're going to visit it. It came out Friday the 13th, and we're going to try to line up the album cover shot as best as we can. This little village is undergoing some pretty serious renovations on some of the buildings. It's nice to see that things are being restored and not left to, you know, rot and crumble and decay. But it looks like down here is the end of the road, which is where the mill is. For the longest time, the identity of the woman on Black Sabbath's self-titled debut album, which turns 50 today, had been unknown. Now, the black figure has finally been revealed as Louisa Livingston, and she makes electronic music. The iconic album's cover was shot by a young photographer named Keith McMillan. He's credited as Keith in the liner notes. McMillan recruited the 18 or 19 year old five foot model for the shoot, which took place at Maple Durham Water Mill in the English county of Oxfordshire. When it comes to the music of Black Sabbath and Ozzy, I can honestly say I've been listening to them for as far back as I could remember. I don't even remember how I was introduced to the music, but I've always liked it. I did get to see Black Sabbath perform once in Burgettstown, Pennsylvania at a venue called the Star Lake Amphitheater. And it's not called that anymore. For some reason, every couple years, venues like that, they always change owners. They always change names, but I did get to see Black Sabbath there and it was pretty amazing. Now I'm going to say this, the first Black Sabbath album is one of my favorites. A lot of people even consider it the first metal album. Listening to it on a cloudy, overcast, rainy English day in England, on the way to the location where they shot the album cover for that album, it's pretty surreal. It's like I heard the music differently for the first time in my life. So the mill is on private property, so you have to have permission to come here. And the owners were kind enough to let me back here. They actually walked back and they told me some about the history here. But this is it, the cover from Black Sabbath's debut album. And supposedly they did a couple different pictures you know, where she was wearing the cloak and where she was wearing something that was a little bit more risque. We decided none of that worked, he said. Any kind of sexuality took away from the more foreboding mood. But she was a terrific model. She had amazing courage and understanding of what I was trying to do. Livingston commented on the shoot herself, recalling that it had been freezing cold when they were taking the photos. I had to get up at about four o'clock in the morning. Keith was rushing around with dry ice, throwing it into the water. It didn't seem to be working very well, so he ended up using a smoke machine, she explained. I'm sure he said it was for Black Sabbath, but I don't know if that meant anything much to me at the time. There's a closer shot of the mill, and I'm not going to lie. I kind of wish that the leaves of the tree weren't so long so we can get an exact shot. But that's not going to happen, which is all right. Absolutely mind-blowing beyond beautiful and I cannot believe that I am standing here. Much, much thanks. All right, you wanna see the cemetery? Now if you do wanna come out and visit the watermill and the tree from Black Sabbath, here's how you do it. You go ahead and move this out. It says Maple Durham, open for private booked tours and events only. For further details, there's the websites. Here it everything is. It's well worth it. It's a beautiful little village, that's for sure. So let's put this into perspective. 
right next to the mill and the tree from Black Sabbath's debut album is this old church and a cemetery. And there is some renovation of the church happening, but the cemetery itself is open so we can walk through. Oh, wow. It just feels like a little nook in the English countryside. We have the church to our right and the village to the left and that building that's on the other side of the cemetery here, that's the wedding venue. Man. I'm trying really hard not to point the camera into the sun because it just kind of makes the image all wonky, but here's a very good look at the church. Looks like there, there's a clock up there that they're revamping as well, renovating. The cemetery really isn't that big, which is perfectly fine because you know what? It's just perfect. Now, what I'd really like is to walk into a cemetery at some point and find a tombstone, a plot, a grave with a bell, or at least the hook for the bell. You know what I'm talking about? Where back in the day, whenever somebody was buried alive, that if they were to wake up, there was a string attached to their finger and they could ring the bell, letting the grave digger the cemetery caretaker knowing that whoever is under the ground is alive and they can dig them up. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Love to see a grave like that at some point. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, a little small mini adventure into the countryside of England. Like I said, about an hour outside of London, this time to the mill where Black Sabbath chose their album cover for their debut album. Until next time, happy Halloween. It's coming my way wherever I go Hard luck is that it stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way